So I have a question for all of you. Are you a adult? Are you playing board games or are you going to Disneyland without any kids? According to Toys R Us and others, there is a segment of adults who engage in activities that are normally for kids, but um, because these adults are looking for comfort and nostalgia during difficult times, they've been deemed adults. And this is a recent trend that um, really started to hit its stride during the pandemic. And uh, this segment, adults are contributing $9 billion to the toy industry, and they make up at least 25% of toy consumers. So a recent toy association survey found that 58% of us adults purchase a toy for themselves. And of those, 60% are buying board games or some type of a craft or building kit. And um, over 50% are buying collectibles and getting involved more in video games. So adults tend to pay more for items, which makes them really attractive and more profitable. So over the past couple of years, toy, toy makers are shifting and creating more products for these consumers. So for example, Mattel, they have created a line of Barbies that uh, dress like David Bowie for $105. There's a grown-up sized electric Razor scooter called Razor Icon that is $600. And then Lego sets are available for Back to the Future Time Machine. There's the Office, a typewriter, and then there's this large light bright set that you can buy for $100 that is based on Stranger Things and you can hang it on your wall as art. So if you're really feeling young at heart, Ann Rodriguez-Jones of Artful Living reports that there's adult camps. This is a growing trend in the travel industry. And it lets grown-ups relive their life-changing experience, but with craft cocktails instead of Kool-Aid. For example, Camp Wandawiga in uh, Elkhorn, Illinois, uh, looks something like it's out of Ralph Lauren. Uh, you wake up to the bugle call, beckoning guests to go and have coffee and pastries. Uh, and then you can play shuffleboard, tennis, basketball, uh, volleyball, canoeing, hiking, and even hatchet throwing. And leisure seekers... Uh, meanwhile, can fill their thermoses with Chardonnay and head down to the craft hut. So something for everyone in that. And then another example of an adult camp is Camp Powerment, which hosts retreats in Ojai, California and in the Poconos. And it challenges guests to embrace their um, identity outside of their occupation. So the camp typically appeals to powerful women with luxury digs and wine-drenched happy hours. And the biggest attraction with them is the cardinal rule that for the first 24 hours, you can't talk about what you do for a living. So uh, what is there to learn from all of this? If toy companies and some of these other travel um, businesses typically focused on kids and continue to only focus on, you know, kind of the age of zero to 13, they would have missed this huge opportunity to serve a new segment that is young at heart, that of course are looking for that comfort and, and nostalgia, which is zero to 110 years old. So we call this approach need segmentation. Now, what does it mean to your business? If you're looking at your customers based on demographics, which are age, income, gender, and firmographics like size, sales, num you know, number of sales employees, you're looking for opportunities by using segmentation. That's where it's based on the attitudes, the behavior, even aspirations. So if you're in the um, medical device industry and you focus on size of hospitals, that's firmographics. But if you can switch that around and segment customers based on their tendency to adopt new technology, you might uncover that there's one segment that really wants to be on the cutting edge and another one that is maybe more conservative and likes to go with the tried and the true. And if you're in the finance industry, you know, are you typically focused just on high net worth or is there a segment of customers that prefer to delegate and they're willing to pay more to have somebody do that heavy lifting, whereas there's another segment that is really all about control and they are going to do most of the work themselves. So when you segment customers based on the underlying motives, uh, it gives you an advantage over your competitors and um, and it helps you address trends that, uh, that you might miss. So, uh, and that's what we're seeing definitely in the toy and the travel industry. So good luck.